Chapter Twelve of The Rover Boys on Land and Sea by Arthur M. Winfield. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter Twelve: Another Accident at Sea. It was four hours later, and Captain Blossom was just preparing to come on deck when there came a fearful shock which threw the golden wave back and over on her side. We have struck! We are on the rocks! came a shrill cry from the deck, and immediately there was an uproar. The Rover boys were thrown to the floor from their berths, and it was several seconds before they could realize what had happened. We have struck something, that is sure, gasped Sam. As quickly as they could, they donned their clothing and made their way to the large stateroom occupied by the girls. Oh, what a shock, came from Nellie. Are you safe? asked Tom i am but poor grace struck her head on the wall and is unconscious without ceremony tom picked up the unconscious girl wrapped her in a blanket and aided by sam carried her to the deck the others following a minute later grace revived on deck they found all in confusion the bowsprit of the golden wave was gone and also the main topmast while a mass of the rigging littered the forecastle it was also announced that the rudder was broken and the vessel was pounding helplessly on the rocks with a big hole in the bow directly below the waterline who changed the course demanded captain blossom we should be fifty miles away from these rocks the first mate made me change the course said the man who had been at the wheel i told him you had said southwest by south and he made it south by west he don't know what he's talking about howled jack lesher the shock had partly sobered him he was steering due south and i told him to make it southwest by south but little more could be said on that point for it was feared that the schooner would go down at any moment we must man the boats said the captain bring up the provisions and the kegs of water and be quick about it are we near land asked dick there should be some islands four or five miles south of this spot answered captain blossom now that there was danger of going down some of the sailors seemed to grow crazy half a dozen tumbled into one of the boats and began to lower it of their own accord stand back there shouted the captain the girls must go first not much shouted one of the sailors is everybody for himself now and in a moment more the small boat had left the ship's side and disappeared in the darkness there were three other boats and the remaining sailors along with the first mate and dan baxter wanted to crowd into these but captain blossom said he would shoot the first man who tried to row away without his orders then some provisions were put into the boats and the captain divided the whole company among the three boats let us stay together captain pleaded dick we can row and what are the girls rover let us go with the rover boys pleaded dora and Nellie and Grace said the same. Old Jerry also stood by his friends. While this talk was going on, there was a rush for two of the boats, and before Captain Blossom could do anything, his men were off, taking Jack Lesher and Dan Baxter with them. "'You can go down with this ship!' cried Dan Baxter, mockingly. An instant later, the darkness hid the speaker from view. "'They have left us!' cried captain blossom but thank fortune the best and largest boat is also left some provisions had been tumbled into this boat and a cask of water followed then the girls were placed on board the rover boys followed and the captain and old jerry came behind to cut away down went the small boat into the mighty waves and each of the boys caught up an oar pull roared captain blossom pull for your lives and they did pull two boys on one side and sam and old jerry on the other the girls huddled in the stern expecting every moment to see the little craft turn bottom side up they scraped along the side of the doomed ship and then along some rocks captain blossom was in the bow peering ahead to the left he yelled quick and then came a shock and the captain disappeared beneath the waves the captain is gone screamed dora but she was hardly heard for the ship was pounding on the rocks and the spray was flying in all directions the boys and old jerry continued to pull knowing not what else to do and at last the spot was left behind and they found themselves on the bosom of the mighty pacific in the black darkness out of sight of everything with only the sounds of the wind and the waves filling their ears 
do you think we will ever get out of this alive asked grace of dora let us pray that we may all be spared answered dora and they did pray more earnestly than they had ever before prayed in their whole lives it was a moment that put their faith to a supreme test the boys did not dare to stop rowing and they kept on until their backs ached and their arms seemed ready to drop from their sockets we had better take turns said dick at last we can't keep this up all night and his suggestion was followed out two rowing at a time for a space of fifteen or twenty minutes they thought they might see something of the other boats but nothing came to view and when they set up a shout at the top of their lungs no answer came back they have either gone down or else got out of this neighborhood said tom it was too bad to lose captain blossom said sam he was not such a bad sort after all it was not long after this that a mass of wreckage drifted past them there was a bit of broken spar and some other woodwork but no human being and they let the wreckage go by looking at his watch dick saw that it was three o'clock in the morning it will be light in another couple of hours he said if we can keep on top of the waves until then perhaps we can sight the islands the captain mentioned i wish it was daylight now sighed nelly fortunately a bundle of clothing had been brought along and as the water was warm nobody suffered much from the wetting received care was taken to keep the provisions as dry as possible for there was no telling how long it would be before they would be able to get more slowly the night dragged by and with the coming of morning the wind went down the storm passing to the northward it is growing lighter announced dora the sunlight is beginning to show over the rim of the sea half an hour later the sun came up like a great ball of fire from a bath in the ocean capping the high waves with gold as the light spread around them dick stood up on a seat and gazed eagerly in all directions what do you see demanded the others nothing he answered with a sinking heart nothing but water on all sides of us the islands they must be somewhere cried tom and he too took a look followed by the others the last to look was old jerry can't see much said the old sailor slowly but i kind of reckon there's a dark spot directly southward it must be one of the islands the captain mentioned exclaimed dora we might as well roll in that direction said dick there is nothing else to do it's queer what became of the other boats said sam some of the provisions were brought forth and they ate sparingly and drank a little of the water then the boys and old jerry took up the oars once more and began to pull as nearly southward as they could make it steering by the sun when the sun grew higher it became very warm so that the rowers were glad enough to lay aside their jackets by noon they reckoned that they had covered six or eight miles one after another stood up on the seats to take a look around nothing inside yet said dick with a sorry shake of his head we must have been mistaken in that dark spot what will you do now asked grace the hot sun is beginning to make my head ache sam's head also ached but he said nothing nobody knew what to suggest one thing is certain we can't remain on the bosom of the ocean said dick better continue to pull southward came from old jerry there are lots of islands down that way the map is full of them yes the map is full of them answered dick but a quarter of an inch on a map means a hundred miles or two in reality it was decided to go on trusting to luck to strike some island either large or small it was now fiercely hot and all hands perspired freely by the end of the afternoon the boys were worn out and had to give up rowing the girls were dozing in the stern having covered their heads with a thin shawl stretched from one gunwale to another tom and sam were dizzy from the glare of the sun on the water another day like this will set me crazy said the youngest rover i'd give ten dollars for a pair of blue goggles old jerry had been looking intently to the westward now he pointed in that direction see that trail of smoke he said unless i am mistaken a steamship is sailing toward us a steamship cried tom 
and the words awoke the girls we must hail the vessel by all means if she comes close enough said captain jerry pointedly don't be too hopeful my lads she may pass us by End of chapter twelve chapter thirteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter 13. The Crusoes of Seven Islands. All on board of the rowboat watched the thin trail of smoke with interest. I believe it is going away from us, said Dora. No, it is coming closer, said Nellie. It is certainly moving to the northward, put in Sam. A quarter of an hour went by, and smoke came only a little nearer she is a big steamer said captain jerry but she ain't coming just this way you are sure cried tom yes lad it's too bad but it can't be helped the old sailor was right half an hour later the smoke had shifted and after that it faded gradually from sight it was a heavy blow after their expectations had been raised so high and tears stood in the eyes of all of the girls while the boys looked unusually sober what was to do next all asked that question yet it was only captain jerry who answered it let us pull southward said he and they did so although with hearts that were as heavy as lead in their bosoms slowly the night came on shortly after the sun set the moon showed itself and the sky became studded with stars the southern cross standing out boldly among them the pale light made the bosom of the ocean glisten like silver beautiful night said dora but who can enjoy it when we do not know what to-morrow will bring forth and she sighed deeply the boys and old jerry continued to take turns at rowing while the girls sank into fitful slumber presently the old sailor raised his head listen he said and they did so and far away heard a strange booming what's that questioned sam it's breakers we must be near some coast a lad is right came from captain jerry we are near an island after all dick stood on a seat and as the boat rode to the top of a wave took a look around an island he cried dead ahead hurrah we are saved ejaculated sam what is the matter questioned dora rousing up followed by the other girls there is an island ahead we must be careful how we approach the shore lads cautioned jerry if we strike the rocks it may cost us our lives perhaps we had better hold off until daylight i see a stretch of sand came from tom who was standing up if we can reach that we'll be all right old jerry took a careful look the sand was there true enough but there were dangerous breakers between the boat and that shore if you say so we can run our chances he said the young ladies must hold tight and not mind a good ducking the force of the waves was now carrying them closer and closer to the breakers under old jerry's directions the boys took a short sharp stroke keeping the rowboat straight up to the waves the noise was like thunder and soon the spray was flying all over them now pull cried captain jerry one two three hold tight girls and away they went into the breakers one wave dashed over the craft but it was not swamped and before another could hit them they darted up a swell and on to a long sandy beach in a twinkle the old sailor was out along with dick and aided by another wave they ran the boat well up the beach out of the harm of the waves it was a hard struggle and when it was over dick sank down almost exhausted saved murmured dora as she leapt out on shore thank heaven and all of the others echoed the sentiment the empty boat was pulled up out of harm's way and chained fast to a palm tree growing near and then the party of seven sat down to rest and to talk over the new condition of affairs they were on a wild tropical coast with a long sandy beach running to the ocean and back of this a dense mass of tropical vegetation including palms plantains coconuts and date trees 
back of the heavy growth was a distant hill standing out dimly in the moonlight this looks like a regular crusoe like island said dora as she gazed around there is not a sign of habitation anywhere a good many of the south sea islands are not inhabited said dick the natives won't live on them because they are subject to volcano eruptions earthquakes and tidal waves well i hope we don't have any of those things while we stay here came from nellie an earthquake would scare me almost to death i do not see that we can do better than to stay right here for the rest of the night said tom i am too tired out to walk very far it was decided to follow tom's advice and all made themselves as comfortable as circumstances permitted they had some matches in a waterproof safe and soon a campfire was started at which they dried some of their garments then after eating some of the provisions that were left they laid down to rest strange as it may seem all slept soundly until sunrise and nothing came to disturb them when the girls arose they found the boys and captain jerry already preparing breakfast on the shore tom had found some oysters and shellfish and these were baking among the provisions were a little tea and coffee and old jerry had made a pot of coffee which did one good to smell sam had brought down some coconuts from a nearby tree and also found some ripe bananas we won't starve to death here that's certain said dick when they all sat down to eat the island is full of good things if i had a gun i could bring down lots of birds and monkeys too i don't think i'd care to eat a monkey said grace but i wouldn't mind eating birds there must be plenty of fish here too said tom in fact i saw some sporting in the waters of a little bay up the coast shall we go up and down the coast after breakfast asked sam my advice is to climb yonder hill and take a squint around came from captain jerry that's a splendid idea providing we can get to the top said dick there's no use of all of us going lad you can go with me while the rest stay here what shall we do in the meantime asked sam better try your hand at fishing lad and see if you can knock some birds over with sticks and stones if you get anything let the girls cook us something or we'll be powerful hungry by the time we get back half an hour later captain jerry and dick set out each carried a few ship's biscuits and also a heavy stick which had been cut in the thickets each wished he had a gun or a pistol but those articles were not to be had the climb up the hill was by no means an easy one the rocks were rough and in many spots the jungle of brush and vines was so thick that to get through was next to impossible it was very warm and they had to stop often to cool off and catch their breath i don't wonder that people in hot countries move slowly said dick i feel more like resting than doing anything else it was almost noon when they came in sight of the top of the hill there were still some rough rocks to climb and these they had to ascend by means of some vines that grew handy what a magnificent view cried dick it certainly was magnificent looking back in the direction they had come they could see the pacific ocean glittering in the bright sunlight and stretching miles and miles out of sight the island they were on looked to be about half a mile in diameter northward eastward and westward was the ocean but to the southward was a circlet of six islands having a stretch of calm water between them between some of the islands the water was very shallow while elsewhere it looked deep seven islands in all said old jerry and not a sign of a house or hut anywhere we are the crusoes of seven islands said dick but do you really believe they are uninhabited do ye see any signs of life lad i must say i do not it's queer too for i rather imagined one at least of the other boats had reached this place i thought the same but it looks now as if they all went to davy jones locker eh it certainly does look that way from the top of the hill they took a careful survey of the situation the elevation was in the very centre of the island down toward the other islands the slope was more abrupt than it was in the direction from which they had come we can take a look at those other islands later on said old jerry reckon as how we have done enough for one day 
if we don't get back soon they'll become anxious about us i wish we had a flag said dick here is a tall tree we could chop away the top branches and hang up a signal of distress if we did that perhaps some ship would come this way and rescue us right ye are lad but it ain't many ships come this way they are afraid of the rocks we run on having looked around once more to get the lay of the land as captain jerry expressed it they started to descend the hill this proved as difficult as climbing up had been dick went in advance and was halfway down when he stepped on a loose stick and went rolling into a perfect network of vines and brushwood are ye hurt sang out old jerry no not much answered the eldest rover but my wind oh goodness gracious dick broke off short and small wonder as he arose from the hole into which he had tumbled a hissing sound caught his ears then up came the head of a snake at least eight feet long and in a twinkle the reptile had wound itself around the boy's lower limbs End of chapter thirteen chapter fourteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt Perard. chapter fourteen settling down on the island what's wrong lad a snake it has wound itself around my legs you don't say gasped captain jerry and then leapt down to the hall well by gosh take that ye beast that was a blow aimed at the reptile's head with the sailor's stick old jerry's aim was both swift and true and the head of the reptile received a blow which knocked out one eye and bruised its fang but the body wound itself around dick tighter than ever fortunately the youth had not lost his wits completely and as the neck of the reptile came up he grasped it in his hand with the strongest grip he could command cut it cut its head off he panted get your pocket knife at once captain jerry dropped his stick and pulled out his jackknife a big affair such as many old sailors carry one pull opened the main blade and then old jerry started in to do as dick had suggested it was no easy job and the body of the snake squirmed and whipped in every direction lashing each on the neck and the cheek but the head came off at last and then they left the body where it fell and leaped out of the way of further danger a close shave lad said the old sailor as he as he peered around for more snags i i should say say it wa was panted dick he was deadly pale i i thought it would strangle me sure if it had got round your neck that is what would have happened reckon as how we had better get out of this neighborhood eh yes yes let us go at once and dick started off once more after that both were very careful where they stepped and kept their eyes wide open for any new danger which might arise so they went on until they came in sight of the seashore we had better say nothing about the snake said the eldest rover it will only scare the girls to death no lad you are wrong we must warn them of danger otherwise they may run into it headlong all of the others were glad to have them back and plied them with questions so there are seven islands said tom well as there are seven of us that is one island apiece i don't think we need complain and his jolly manner made all laugh when jerry told the story about the snake dora set up a scream oh dick if it had really strangled you she gasped you must be very very careful in the future yes and you must be careful too dora he answered there's a nice beach right around the edge of the island said old jerry so when we want to visit the other islands we can walk around on the sand that is better than climbing the hill but the beach doesn't run to the other islands does it asked sam no but we can carry our rowboat around with us to that bay between the islands there the water is smooth enough for anybody to row in the six islands are shaped exactly like a ring said dick and this island is the big stone on top 
as the island is uninhabited i suppose we'll have to settle down and build ourselves huts or something came from nellie to be sure we'll be regular robinson crusoes answered tom why i can tell you it will be jolly when we get used to it where will we build our huts asked sam we can build them here if we wish replied dick but i rather favor the side fronting the other islands yes that's the best side said captain jerry if we build here a strong storm may knock our huts flat that side is more sheltered and consequently safer besides there is more fruit there and i'm sure better fishing in the bay and that's what counts too of course it counts since we must live on fruits fish and what birds and animals we managed to knock over said tom the boys had been fairly successful in hunting and fishing having knocked over half a dozen birds and caught four fair-sized fish everything had been done to a turn over the campfire and dick and old jerry did full justice to what was set before them on some dried palm leaves nellie had found their coffee they drank out of some coconut shells they had no forks but used sharp sticks instead and the knives the boys carried in their pockets the weather continued fine and that night the moon shone as brightly as ever the boys took a stroll on the beach to talk over their plans i am sorry to say there is no telling how long we may have to stay here said dick it may be a day a week or for years oh some ship is bound to pick us up some day returned tom and if we can find enough to live on in the meantime what is the use of complaining i am glad my life was spared so am i tom i would like to know what became of dan baxter put in sam can it be possible that all of the rest perished certainly it is possible sam you know what a time we had of it it is an awful death to die in the midst of the ocean and the youngest rover shuddered i agree with you said tom but i am more sorry for captain blossom than for baxter the wrecking of the ship was the fault of the mate he was drunk said dick the man at the wheel was doing what was right until jack lesher came along well i guess the mate went down with the rest look cried sam pointing to sea i see something dark on the water all gazed in the direction he pointed out and made out a mass of wreckage they watched it steadily until the breakers cast it almost at their feet some wreckage from the ship cried dick on examination see here is the name on some of the woodwork i reckon the vessel went to pieces on the rocks the wreckage consisted mainly of broken spars and cordage but there were also some boxes which on being opened proved to contain provisions it's not such a bad find after all said tom i hope some more comes ashore but though they waited the best part of the night nothing more came to view in the morning the boys felt tired and they did not rouse up until nearly noon they found old jerry at the beach inspecting the wreckage the ropes may come in handy he said but the wood is of small account since we have all we want already to hand it was decided to remain at the beach for the next day to look for more wreckage but none came in and then they started in a body to skirt the shore around to the south bay as old jerry called it at first they thought to carry the boat around but concluded to come back for that later it was a journey full of interest for the sandy beach was dotted with many strange and beautiful seashells and just back of the sand was the rich tropical growth already mentioned the woods were full of monkeys and birds and once tom thought he caught sight of some goats or deer they reached an ideal spot fronting the little bay a little before noon and then the girls were glad enough to sit down in the shade and rest the bay was full of fish and before long they had caught three of the finny tribe fruit was also to be had in plenty and a spring of fresh water gushed from the rocks of the hill behind them this is certainly a beautiful place murmured dora as she gazed around were it not for the folks at home worrying about us i could spend quite some time here and enjoy it well as our situation cannot be helped let us make the best of it 
said dick cheerfully there is no use in being downhearted when we ought to be glad that we were saved close to the rocks they found several trees growing in something of two circles and they decided that these trees should form the corner posts of a double house or cabin if we had an axe we might cut down some wood but as it is we will have to use strong vines and cover the huts with palm leaves said captain jerry the boys were soon at work cutting the vines and gathering the palm leaves and the girls assisted as well as they were able in fastening up the vine ropes and binding in the leaves it was slow work yet by nightfall one half of the house was complete and the other had the roof covered now if rain comes we can keep fairly dry said tom it rained the very next day and they were glad enough to crowd into the completed part while the rain came down in torrents when the worst of the downpour was over the wind arose and it kept blowing fiercely all of the afternoon and the night we can be thankful we are sheltered by the hill said sam were we on the other side of the island the wind would knock the hut flat and drench us in no time the storm kept all awake until early morning and when it went down they were glad to sink to rest all slept soundly and it was not until ten o'clock when the sun was struggling through the clouds that tom arose to find the others still slumbering i'll let them sleep he said to himself they need it and there is no need for them to get up stretching himself he walked quietly from the hut and down to the beach his first thought was to try to collect some wood more or less dry and start a fire gazing across the bay to one of the other islands he saw a sight which filled him with astonishment there on the beach of the island lay the wreck of the golden wave End of chapter fourteen chapter fifteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Matt Perard. Chapter 15. Another Castaway Brought to Light. The Golden Wave! Hurrah! Tom could not resist setting up a shout when he saw the familiar hull of the schooner resting quietly on the beach of an island on the other side of the bay. The cry awoke Sam, Dick, and old Jerry and they came running out to learn what it meant the schooner came from sam how did that get there the storm must have driven her off the rocks and into this bay answered dick she didn't go down after all it's a fine thing for us put in captain jerry his broad face beaming with pleasure now we can have all the provisions we want and clothing and guns and if we can anchor the wreck in some way we can live on her just as comfortably as in a house at home the excited talking brought the girls out one after another and they were equally pleased over the stroke of good fortune she seems to be cast up pretty high on the sand said old jerry but even so the sooner we get to her the better or the sea may carry her off i am ready to go now said tom but how are we to get to that island it's a pity we didn't bring our boat around there are two islands of the circle in between came from sam why can't we swim from one to the next and get around that way we can try it lad but we want to be careful there may be sharks around in these parts oh don't let the sharks eat you up cried grace we'll keep our eyes open never fear said dick a vote was taken and it was decided that sam should remain with the girls to protect them in case of unexpected danger while tom dick and old jerry should make their way as best they could to the wreck the old sailor and the two boys were soon off they tramped down the beach a short distance and then reached a coral reef leading to the next island here the water was not over a foot and a half deep and as clear as crystal so the passage to island number two as tom named it was comparatively easy the second island crossed they followed the shore around until they came opposite to the island upon which the wreck rested here there was a channel sixty or eighty feet wide and of unknown depth the channel through which the wreck had most likely entered the bay the water here was by no means smooth and captain jerry shook his head doubtfully 
it won't be no easy swim he said reckon as how i'll try it first i can get over easily enough said dick and threw off part of his clothing and his shoes he was soon in the water and striking out boldly and the others followed short as was the distance the swim was as hard as any of them looked for and when they reached the other side of the channel all were out of breath and had to rest for a moment it's a good thing no shark happened to be near said tom the monster would certainly have had it us at his mercy when they reached the wreck they found the stern well out of the water the golden wave lay partly on her left side and it was a comparatively easy matter to gain the deck the masts were gone and there was a big hole in the bow but otherwise the craft had suffered little damage why she had not sunk was a mystery until later on old jerry discovered that some of the cargo consisting of flat cases had got wedged into the break thus cutting off a large portion of the leak we can anchor her without trouble said the old sailor and perhaps straighten her up too so the deck won't be so slanty then she'll be a regular hotel for all hands let us go below and see how things are down there said dick and he at once led the way at that instant a loud sneeze reached their ears causing dick to pause on the companionway looking into the cabin he saw a man standing there partly dressed captain blossom he ejaculated is it really you or your ghost dick rover cried the master of the schooner then you weren't drowned after all no captain but but how did you escape is it really captain blossom came from tom and he rushed down into the cabin followed by old jerry all shook hands and the face of the captain showed his pleasure over the meeting so you all escaped and are here he said i am downright glad to know it what of the others we don't know what became of the other boats answered dick saw nothing at all not a thing the captain shook his head sorrowfully but how did you escape asked dick again that is a short story lad when i went overboard from the rowboat i caught hold of some of the wreckage from the schooner this was still fast to the deck and by hauling myself in i soon got on board again as i had no boat i remained on board for i soon saw that the schooner would not go down immediately at daylight the ship left the rocks and drifted around on the ocean until the wind came up last night when we struck this island and got beached as you see i was worn out with watching and as soon as i found the boat was safe from sinking i went to bed and slept soundly until i heard you three tramping around the deck we are stopping over on yonder island said tom when all went on deck and he pointed in the direction see sam and the girls are waving to us let us wave in return and stand apart so they can see that there are four of us they did as the youngest rover advised and soon saw that they were seen then captain blossom held up his spyglass i reckon they will know who i am by that he said and he was right for sam told the girls that the fourth man was captain blossom beyond a doubt how is your stock of provisions asked old jerry we are getting just a bit tired of living on birds and fish and we want a gun or pistol with which to protect ourselves the golden wave has enough provisions to last this party a year answered the captain we haven't anything very fine but we have plenty of flour dried beans salt and smoked meats and a good many cases of canned vegetables as well as sugar tea coffee salt and pepper with fresh fish and some game we'll be able to live as well here as if we were on shore that is if we can find fresh water we have all the fresh water we want on the large island said tom and lots of tropical fruit coconuts bananas and the like if we are going to live on the ship we'll have to bring fresh water over from the other island in a cask said dick that will not be very handy can't we move the wreck over came from tom no lad answered captain blossom she is here to stay until her timbers rot but if we wish we can move some of the provisions ashore there are the parts of a rowboat below and i reckon i am carpenter enough to put the parts together in a day or two 
we have a boat on the north beach said old jerry we can bring it around to do that we'll have to swim the channel again came from dick and i must say i don't like that let us make a raft cried tom there must be plenty of material on board of the schooner for that there certainly is answered captain blossom come we can make a raft in less than an hour all set to work and in a short space of time they had the material together ropes and spikes were there of plenty and as captain blossom laid out one stick and another the boys and old jerry either nailed or tied them together a board flooring was placed on top of the spars and then the whole affair was dumped into the bay with a loud splash it floated very well with the flooring a good ten inches above the surface of the water and as the raft was nearly twenty feet long by ten wide it was capable of carrying considerable weight that's better than a boat said dick we can pile a good deal more stuff on it let us get on and paddle to where we left the others said tom they will be anxious to learn the news captain blossom was willing and they took with them a variety of provisions and also some extra clothing and some firearms then the raft was moved to where the boys had left part of their own clothing when they had started to swim the channel the coming of the big raft and its passengers to the shore where the cabin was located was greeted with shouts of joy from sam and the three girls hurrah for the captain of the golden wave cried sam swinging his cap in the air we are very glad to see you safe and sound and i am glad to see you answered captain blossom as he leapt ashore and grasped one and another by the hand last night i was thinking i would be a lonely castaway now i find i shall have plenty of company we have brought along some provisions put in tom and in honor of this reunion and also in honor of the fact that the golden wave has not been sunk i move we invite the girls to get us up a regular feast i think all hands deserve it i second the motion cried sam all right we'll cook you anything you want said nelly that is if you will supply the things i will answered tom then he scratched his head well by gracious what's the trouble tom asked grace did you forget to bring along some sugar worse than that i brought along all sorts of good things to eat and not a single knife fork spoon or dish outside of some cooking utensils oh dear burst out dora it will be a sorry feast if we haven't anything to eat from i'll go back for the dishes replied tom promptly sam do you want to visit the wreck we can go and come by the time the things are cooked to be sure i'll go said sam and in a few minutes more the two boys were off on the clumsy raft End of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter sixteen sam and the shark the golden wave looks like an old friend said sam as they paddled across the smooth waters of the bay her coming here is the finest thing that could have happened answered his brother i didn't want to say anything before but if she hadn't come what would we have done for clothing and for eating we couldn't live on fish all the time and one can do mighty little hunting without a gun we would have had to set traps tom and dig pitfalls for larger game but i admit it would have been hard work and i fancy a suit of goatskins like robinson crusoe wore wouldn't be half as comfortable as a suit of clothes such as i am wearing if we could only float the schooner and sail away to some nearby port there is no port within three hundred miles of us so the captain says soon the boys were halfway across the bay but moving the big raft was a laborious task and they were glad enough to sit down and rest for a few minutes there is no use of our hurrying said tom our time is our own in this out-of-the-way place and as we have next to nothing to do we want to make what little work there is last us like a lazy man working by the day laughed sam i'm afraid i can't work that way 
when i have something to do i'm not content until it is done are you hot sam here is something to cool you off as tom spoke he playfully scooped up a handful of water and threw it at his brother soon the two brothers were having lots of sport throwing handfuls of the salty water at each other then sam made a motion as if he was going to push tom overboard with his paddle hi none of that cried tom i don't mind a wedding by retail but i don't want it by wholesale he continued to throw water at sam and the youngest rover tried to dodge the raft began to rock and of a sudden sam lost his balance and went into the bay with a splash tom set up a laugh for it was a comical sight and it had been sam's own fault that he went overboard but then tom's laughter came to an end as he saw the form of a shark moving swiftly toward the spot a shark a shark he screamed sam get on board quick a shark is after you sam had gone far down beneath the surface and he did not reappear at once then he came up spluttering gosh i didn't want a bath tom you hurry and get aboard sam a shark is after you sam was about ten feet from the raft and running to the spot nearest to him tom held out the end of his paddle a shark gasped the youngest rover yes yes catch the end of the paddle sam made a frantic effort to do so in the meantime the shark came closer and tom could see his enormous mouth and sharp teeth clearly his blood turned to ice in his veins sam made a clutch at the paddle missed it and disappeared once more from sight the shark rushed to the spot and turned in dismay and driven to desperation tom hit the monster over the head with the paddle then the shark disappeared also the next few seconds were full of agony for poor tom he gazed in all directions for sam and for the shark but neither one nor the other was to be seen he must have caught sam under the water he muttered oh sam what an awful death to die a slight noise at the upper end of the raft disturbed him he turned swiftly to see a wet hand glide over the woodwork he made a leap and clutched the hand and then sam's head appeared he gave a frantic yank and both lay on the flooring of the raft sam was saved the shark gasped tom when he could speak did it it bite you no but it grazed my shoulder answered sam if i had not dived down i would have lost an arm at the very least when they felt able they looked around but the shark had disappeared that settles it said tom we must be careful and keep out of this water in the future if we want to bathe we will have to build a pool during the remainder of the trip to the wreck both were careful not to run the slightest chance of falling overboard not such a very lovely place to live in after all said tom snakes on land and sharks in the water ugh and sam agreed with him once on the wreck it was an easy thing to obtain the dishes and the knives forks and spoons and also some other things they thought they might require they also brought away another gun loading it up before leaving the ship now if mr shark comes around again we can give him a dose of buckshot said tom but the shark did not appear excepting at a great distance when sam told his story all congratulated him on his narrow escape tom is right said old jerry you mustn't do no bathing in the bay we can fix two pools one for the ladies and one for ourselves and make another pool for fish and another for turtles if we can find any the girls had cooked a splendid meal and soon the table was set on a big flat rock lying near the beach all sat down and captain blossom asked a blessing and then they all fell to with vigor for all were hungry the salt air gives one an appetite said dick the meal lasted the best part of an hour for as tom said there was no use of hurrying as they ate and for some time afterward they discussed their situation and tried to arrange plans for the future it was decided that first of all dick and old jerry should climb to the top of the hill taking with them an axe and a flag and some halyards and fasten the flag to the top of the tree stars down as a signal of distress then the whole party was to assist in bringing from the wreck as much building material as was necessary to construct a comfortable dwelling of three large rooms 
one for the girls one for the boys and men and one as a general living-room a storehouse was also to be built in which could be stored such provisions as were brought away from the wreck from time to time then they could live on shore or on the ship as they pleased the following day was sunday and all rested the girls thought there should be some sort of religious exercises and all went to the wreck where captain blossom read some chapters from the bible and the others sang hymns the week to follow was a busy one and the time slipped by rapidly a visit was paid to the hilltop and the flag raised and tom and old jerry also went to the north shore and brought around the rowboat beach there in the meantime captain blossom put together the rowboat parts stored on the golden wave so they now had two boats and the raft for service across the bay and two other points on the water building the house was by no means an easy task but the rover boys thought it more fun than work especially with the girls to look on and by the end of the second week the building looked quite presentable when the two bedrooms were finished some berths were brought over from the wreck along with bed clothing and also some furniture for the living apartment outside the latter room a large porch was built where they might eat and rest when the weather was fine not to run the risk of burning down the building in a high wind it was decided that the cooking should be done in a shed some distance away in the shelter of the rocks and handy to the spring who is going to be the cook asked dick it won't be fair to put it off on one person we have decided to take turns said dora each one will be the main cook for a day at a time with the others to help and to wash the dishes we are going to do all the housework too so you men folks can hunt and fish and make garden if you will to your heart's content what a lazy time we will have of it laughed dick captain blossom says that as soon as we are settled we can explore all of the seven islands who knows we may find out something of importance came from tom who stood near cannibals for instance put in sam oh do you really think there are any cannibals here asked grace i believe he is fooling said nellie he only wants to scare us and she tossed her pretty head perhaps we'll stir up some lions or tigers said tom or an elephant added dick but i don't think we will my opinion is that these islands have nothing on them but birds monkeys small game and snakes you've forgotten one thing said dora with an odd smile what dora castaways End of chapter 16chapter seventeen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter seventeen exploring the seven islands another rainy spell lasting three days followed but after that the sky cleared in a fashion which captain blossom thought betokened good weather for some time to come we can now explore the seven islands and learn just what they contain he said the question now arose as to who should go along and who should stay at home with the girls lots were cast and by this it was decided that the exploring party should consist of captain blossom sam and tom leaving dick and old jerry with dora nellie and grace it was decided that the exploring party should take the lightest of the rowboats and enough provisions to last for a week each was also provided with a pistol and captain blossom carried a rifle in addition if all goes well we will be back inside of four days said the captain when he and tom and sam were ready to depart but if we are not back at that time do not worry until at least a week has gone by it was also arranged that three shots fired in succession should be a signal that one party or the other was in trouble tom and sam were pleased over the prospect of going with the captain and they willingly took up the oars to row to the nearest island which as we already know was close at hand the boat was left on the beach and without delay the captain and the two boys plunged into the interior the island was small with but a slight rise of ground in the centre it was of small importance and they soon came out 
on the ocean side where there was a beach strewn with shells and with oysters scarcely fit to eat the growth on this island was mostly of young palms and the captain was of the opinion that the ground was not many years old this has been thrown up by an earthquake or a volcano he said there is nothing here to interest us and he turned back they already knew something of the island on which the wreck was located but nevertheless made a trip across it and up the outward coast here they found a number of orange and lemon trees and also a great quantity of tropical nuts and some spices the lemons proved to be very refreshing and tom said he meant to come back some day and get a bagful for general use the next island was visited the next day the party spending the night on the wreck the passage to this island was rather a rough one and they had all they could do to keep from having their provisions spilt overboard it is a blessing that the sea is comparatively calm said captain blossom otherwise we could never make such a trip in a small boat this island was the largest of the group outside of the one on which the castaways had settled it was almost square in shape and had a double hill with a tiny valley running between in this valley the tropical growth was very dense and the monkeys and birds were thicker than they had before seen them there were also large quantities of blue and green parrots filling the air with their cawing and screaming this is a very nice island said tom while they were resting under some calabash trees the wood is very valuable indigo rosewood mahogany and lots of others and what a sweet smell and he drew in a long breath of satisfaction it is certainly a lazy man's paradise returned sam a fellow need do next to nothing to feed and clothe himself here and a house isn't absolutely necessary excepting when it storms real hard on this island they found numerous land crabs some as large as their two hands and many fierce-looking spiders with long hairy legs and bulging eyes ants were also numerous and in one spot they located fifteen ant hills each as large as a big beehive insects of all sorts were numerous and they had to continually slap at a specimen of red fly that annoyed them greatly how those ants would like to get at our provisions said tom we can be thankful that we didn't locate here once they got at the stuff they would eat us out of house and home after resting and partaking of some of the food brought along they continued their journey across the island the way was up one of the hills and tom was slightly in advance when a noise ahead attracted his attention something is there he called out as he came to a halt what is it asked sam i don't know perhaps a wild animal or else a snake go slow there cautioned captain blossom coming up we don't want to run into unnecessary danger what did it sound like tom i can't describe it something like a snarl i guess perhaps it was only a monkey all stopped to listen but no sound reached their ears but the hum of insects and the chirping of some distant birds i reckon i had best go first said captain blossom but he did not seem to relish the task gun in hand the captain advanced very cautiously the boys came close behind him each with his pistol ready for use of a sudden there was a snarl with a strange yow yowing and a great beast leapt up on all fours directly in their path and darted through the bushes the captain raised his gun and the boys their pistols but before they could fire the beast had disappeared what was it asked sam trembling with excitement i give it up unless it was a bear said tom i think i know what it was said the captain a big baboon or a gorilla i guess you are right captain answered tom i saw a gorilla in a menagerie and it was exactly like that beast but what a big fellow he was gorillas are highly dangerous especially when cornered said captain blossom he himself was more frightened than he cared to admit they have been known to carry a man off in their arms and bite him to death thanks but i want no gorillas around me declared sam they waited several minutes before advancing again but the gorilla had disappeared nor did it show itself again during that trip on the island half an hour brought them in sight of the seashore once more 
they were gazing at the sea when tom happened to glance back and on the hill behind them saw four goats standing in a bunch looking at them in astonishment quick out of sight he cried and dragged the others behind some trees what did you see several goats perhaps if we are careful we can get a shot at them fresh goat meat won't go bad what's the matter with capturing some of the goats and getting the milk came from sam you'll have a job catching wild goats answered captain blossom they are as fleet of foot as deer it was decided to try two shots at the goats providing they could get close enough with care they plunged into the undergrowth and made their way back up the hillside until they thought they must be within fifty yards of the game there they are cried tom softly bang with the captain's gun and crack tom fired immediately after two of the goats were hit and one fell dead the other staggered away with a broken foreleg we must get that second fellow cried sam and rushed after the game the goat tried to turn on him but sam hit the beast over the head with a club he carried two other blows finished the animal that isn't bad said the captain they both look to be young they ought to make good eating we are going to have no easy work of it getting these animals down to the shore said tom after we get them to the shore what then questioned his brother we can't keep them in the boat all the time that we are exploring the other islands we had best make a trip back to the house answered captain blossom if the others heard the shots they'll be wondering what has happened besides a storm is coming up the captain said he would carry the smaller of the goats alone leaving the two rovers to carry the larger game between them after a rest and another look around the vicinity they started for the boat and reached it after a walk which almost exhausted every one of the party i'll be glad enough to lay around our camp and rest for a day announced sam this task of exploring is not as easy as it looks a little later they were in the boat and rowing back to where they had left the others little dreaming of the strange events that had happened in their absence End of chapter seventeen chapter eighteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter eighteen unexpected visitors it had been decided by the castaways to enlarge one of the rooms of the house and as soon as the captain tom and sam had departed on their exploring tour dick and old jerry set to work to cut down the posts necessary for the building while this was going on the three girls were by no means idle there were meals to get dishes to wash and it had been found that outdoor life was very rough on clothing so there was a good bit of sewing and darning to be done fortunately all of the girls were handy with a needle so that a rent in a coat or a dress received immediate attention now you must make the alteration in the house very nice said dora to dick remember we want a regular queen anne building with round bay windows and and inlaid floors finished dick not to mention steam heat and mercy on us burst in grace don't mention steam heat in this climate of course we want hot and cold water in the kitchen put in nelly what sort of a mansion would it be without hot and cold water and a dumb waiter from the cellar too and then all began to laugh i know what i should like said dora after a pause that would be a refrigerator if we had the ice finished nelly dick isn't there any ice on board of the golden wave by jove i think there is cried the oldest rover boy i never once thought of it before if there is i wish you'd bring some the next time you go over we have lemons and we could make delicious lemonade and we could make orange ice too put in grace i know there was an ice cream freezer on board of the ship it was in the cook's galley old jerry was coming to the house with a small tree he had cut down and dick sounded him about the ice to be sure there was ice several tons of it said jerry it was stowed away near the bow i don't believe it's all melted either i'm going over to see cried dick we've got plenty of lemons and sugar and lemonade not to mention orange ice would just strike the spot in this awfully hot weather 
but as it was now noon with the sun directly overhead dick decided to remain in the shade until four or five o'clock dinner was had and then the work of enlarging the house went on as before at half past four dick got out of the rowboat and started for the wreck he had first thought to go alone but old jerry wanted to pick out certain tools needed for the house building as well as hunt for a keg of nails and the two decided to go together going and coming as quickly as possible you won't be afraid to be alone will you asked dick of the girls not if you hurry answered nelly but don't stay away after dark left to themselves the three girls swept up the chips the builders had left and started up the camp fire then they tidied up the house generally and soon set about preparing the supper dora was at the spring getting a pail of water when a sound on the rocks nearly caused her to look around in wonder to her amazement dan baxter stood there staring at her in open-mouthed astonishment dan baxter she gasped where in the world did you come from for a moment the bully did not answer so great was his amazement dora noted that he was dirty and unkempt and that his clothing was almost in rags is it you dora stanhope came slowly from the fellow's lips is it really you yes she answered how did you get here are you alone went on baxter coming closer and then before she could answer he added got anything to eat at the last question she looked at him more closely and saw that he appeared half starved she pitied him despite his character yes we have plenty to eat she said then give me something at once he cried give me something at once come with me there was now a crashing in the bushes back of dan baxter and in a second more jack lasher appeared on the scene he too was haggard and dirty and his eyes were much bloodshot the result of living almost entirely on liquor for several days after being wrecked on the islands well is it possible cried the mate of the golden wave they've got lots to eat muttered dan baxter i'm going to have something to fill me up before i start to talk how many more of you are here asked dora in something of dismay we came along alone said baxter show us that grub dora led the way to the campfire where nellie and grace were also surprised at the unexpected visitors some food was brought forth and both baxter and lesher ate like two famished wolves got any liquor questioned the mate casting his eyes toward the house we have a little answered nellie for captain blossom had brought over several bottles from the wreck bring it out when the liquor was brought jack lesher took a long draught and then handed the bottle to dan baxter that's the stuff cried the mate with a sly wink at dora better than eaten twice over and he took another drink the manner of the two newcomers was not at all pleasing to the girls and they were sorry that none of the men folks were at hand they asked the pair to tell their story and baxter spoke up while lesher applied himself to the bottle we floated around the ocean for several days said the bully one sailor went crazy from the sunshine and leapt overboard and was drowned then a heavy wind came up and drove the boat in the night onto an island close to this one we were cast ashore with hardly any provisions and two of the sailors were sick we had to live on fish birds and fruit and we'd had a hard lot of it i can tell you that yesterday lesher and i resolved to explore this island thinking that perhaps some of the wreckage from the schooner had washed ashore here we came over in the afternoon and tramped along the north shore until it grew dark but without finding anything we slept at the shore last night and this morning started to go over the hill back there but the snakes chased us off and then we came around over some rough rocks where both of us got our clothing torn we thought we saw a flag up there somewhere but we weren't sure yes we have a signal of distress up there answered dora she hardly knew how best to reply who is here captain blossom old jerry tolman and the three rover boys old jerry and dick have just gone over to the wreck on an errand the others have gone on an exploring tour among the islands which are seven in number got the wreck have you came in almost a grunt from jack lesher 
sure enough he staggered down to the beach don't see why you stay here when you might be aboard of her it is cooler here answered nellie how many sailors were saved asked grace nine were saved besides lesher and myself answered dan baxter you see we picked up some of the men from one of the other boats then your party numbers eleven in all said dora yes came from jack lesher and i am the captain of the lot and he bobbed his head in satisfaction he had partaken of just enough liquor to make him foolish i wish dick and old jerry would come back whispered grace to dora i do not like mr lesher at all i never liked him replied dora when he gets intoxicated he is a bad fellow to deal with reckon we'll make ourselves comfortable here said lesher staggering to a hammock dick had put up for the girls to rest in he pitched into the hammock carrying a bottle of liquor with him another drink was taken and soon he was fast asleep snoring loudly End of chapter eighteen chapter nineteen of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter 19. Hot Words and Blows. What a shame, said Nellie, pointing to the slumbering mate. That shows what liquor will do, came from Dora. Oh, you mustn't blame him too much, returned Dan Baxter, who also liked the taste of the liquor. Remember that we have been living a dog's life since we came on shore, while you have been living on the best the ship affords i wouldn't touch liquor if i was starving cried grace and neither would the rover boys added dora oh you think the rover boys are regular saints grumbled the bully you don't know what they would do behind your back if they said they wouldn't drink they wouldn't cried nellie her eyes flashing we can trust them every time i suppose the rover boys run this place to suit themselves went on baxter eyeing the house and the general appearance of the camp sharply we all run it together came from grace isn't captain blossom in command after a fashion yes we haven't tried to decide that point yet have you a leader in your camp not much of a one lesher is leader when he is sober of course we'll all come over here now we found you in the wreck went on dan baxter but why should you come here asked dora not at all pleased by the prospect we can let you have your share of what's on board of the schooner don't want me here eh i don't care for all of those rough sailors well they are captain blossom's men you mustn't forget that i suppose that is true and dora sighed with the coming of the sailors she was certain the camp would not be as pleasant as formerly i don't think you ought to be down on me dora continued dan baxter after a pause i always liked you and you know it thank you for nothing she replied coldly i'm just as good a fellow as dick rover went on the bully and laid his hand on the girl's shoulder don't touch me dan baxter she cried i won't hurt you come let us be friends surely you don't want any enemies here where there are only a handful of us all told i want you to leave me alone she tried to move away from him but he caught her by the arm and tried to hold her hands grace and nelly were out of sight the one having gone into the house for some dishes and the other to the spring for some water say that you'll be friends and i'll let you go he said drawing her closer i won't be friends with you dan baxter so there she cried now let me go and she tried to push him away you you little cat he cried and then as she let out a loud cry he let go of her what a little fool you are and he walked away to the trees and threw himself down to rest red in the face and ready to cry dora ran into the house grace looked at her in wonder what is the trouble dora nothing did dan baxter try to to he wants to be be friends sobbed dora he held my hand so i couldn't get away oh how i despise him just wait till dick comes back 
he'll make baxter mind his own business oh don't tell him grace but i shall dora baxter has got to keep his distance i hate him myself and so does nelly i wish he and mr lesher had kept their distance do you think they will really come here i mean all of the sailors more than likely the girls continued their work and for the time being dan baxter kept his distance jack lesher continued to snore away in the hammock nor did he rouse up when dick and old jerry returned dan baxter cried dick as he leapt up from the rowboat where did you come from and then the story of the newcomers had to be told over again dick eyed jack lesher with open disgust a man who will act like this has no welcome in our camp he said to baxter you don't mean you are going to turn him out said the bully in alarm if he stays here he must behave himself you forget that he was the first mate of the schooner dick rover we are not in the schooner now no but you are getting your living or the largest part of it from the schooner what do you mean baxter i mean that it's the same as if you were on the schooner and that being so mr lesher is the second in command here at this statement the girls looked alarmed and even old jerry's face showed his uneasiness but dick's face was full of contempt do you mean to say that thing pointing to the drunken mate that thing can command any of us if you do let me say right now that you are mistaken we'll see about that later this is our camp and it is not for you the mate or anybody else to come here and dictate to us if you try that we'll send you off in double quick order there was a pause and dick and old jerry began to unload the things they had brought from the wreck they had found a large cake of ice but the coming of baxter and jack lesher had taken away the pleasure of making lemonade and orange ice and the lump was placed in some water to cool it for drinking purposes as soon as grace could get the chance she told dick of the way dan baxter had treated dora at once dick's face took on a stern look that boded the bully no good i'll have a talk with him and come to an understanding said the eldest rover and strode out of the house and to where baxter was walking up the beach picking up fancy-colored seashells look here baxter i want to have an understanding with you he said catching the bully by the arm what do you want now i want you to promise to leave dora stanhope alone in the future how i treat her is none of your business blustered the bully but it is my business baxter see here dick rover i won't be bossed by you howled the tall youth you mind your own business if you touch her again there will be trouble what will you do i'll give you the worst thrashing you ever had in your life two can play at that game there will be only one in this game do you want to fight me i am perfectly willing responded dick recklessly his anger was deep at that moment all right then come on howled baxter savagely and squaring off he aimed a blow at dick's face the attack was so sudden that dick could scarcely prepare for it and though he dodged baxter's fist glanced glancingly on his cheek there you are and here's another cried the bully and his other fist shot out catching dick on the shoulder but now the oldest rover was on his guard and in a twinkle he let drive taking dan baxter in the eye it was a staggering blow and made the bully gasp with pain then dick followed it up by a crashing blow on the chin which sent the bully reeling into the low water on the beach don't don't run me into the ocean he spluttered and watching his chance ran out of the water and up the beach but dick was now thoroughly aroused and he made after baxter when he got close enough he put out his foot and sent the bully sprawling baxter came down on some rough seashells cutting his face and hands in several places oh oh he howled stop it i will not stop it dan baxter until you promise to let dora stanhope and the other girls alone in the future they want nothing to do with you and you must keep your distance i i didn't hurt anybody do you promise to let them alone 
without replying the bully staggered to his feet the blood was running from his nose and from a cut on his chin and both of his hands were also bleeding do you want to kill me dick rover i want you to behave yourself come now are you going to promise what if i don't then i'll give you the thrashing i promised all right i'm cornered and can't help myself will you let the girls alone in the future yes if they don't want to be friends i'm sure i can get along without them answered baxter sulkily very well now see that you keep your promise if you don't i'll run you out of camp and never let you come near us again with these words dick turned on his heel and walked away leaving baxter to wash his cuts and bruises in the ocean and otherwise care for them as best he could End of chapter nineteen chapter twenty of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter twenty the mate tries to take command the fight had taken place around a bend of the shore so that it was not observed by old jerry and the girls but when dick got back to camp dora at once noticed that something unusual had happened what is wrong dick she asked oh nothing much dora i merely made dan baxter promise to keep his distance in the future did you have a fight it didn't amount to much he had to give in pretty quickly oh dick she caught his arm i won't have him annoying you or the others dora you are so good she whispered supper was ready and they sat down leaving jack lesher still in the hammock they had nearly finished when dan baxter came shuffling along do you want some supper asked dick if you do come on i don't want anything more tonight growled the bully and sat down beside jack lesher it was rather an uncomfortable evening the thoughts of each of the party were busy at the first opportunity dick called old jerry to one side jerry we must watch those two fellows closely he said right you are dick i am afraid lesher will be ugly when he wakes up more than likely lad he always was on board ship the drink gives him an awful temper i am going to put the liquor where he can't get it he'll make you give it to him will he just you wait and see replied dick firmly it was decided to let lesher rest in the hammock all night baxter was given a cot in the living-room of the house soon all had retired and the camp was quiet for the night dan baxter was the first to stir in the morning his cuts smarted so he could not sleep and he walked out to bathe them and put on some salve nellie had generously turned over to him he found jack lesher stirring hello grumbled the mate sitting up and yawning where am i don't you know we struck camp answered baxter oh yes i remember now got some good liquor too where is that bottle you emptied it lesher did i too bad i'll have to find another where are the girls asleep in the house and so were dick rover and old jerry tolman what of captain blossom and them other rover boys they are not expected back for several days hm. say i feel bad i do i must have something to brace me up you'd better not disturb them lesher they are mighty stiff-necked since they landed here what do you mean they gave me to understand yesterday that they were going to run things to suit themselves they are not going to let us interfere in anything i like that the mate yawned again rose and stretched himself baxter do you know where they keep the liquor no i'm bound to have what i want didn't it all come from the golden wave and ain't i the first mate of that craft to be sure you are lesher they can't make me take a back seat went on the mate his head was still far from clear i told them that you were second in command captain blossom being first but they wouldn't listen they said they were on land and you didn't count don't i count cried jack lesher his bloodshot eyes taking on an ugly look i'll show em just then old jerry came from the house jack lesher staggered toward him ahoy there 
he called out what do you want mr lesher questioned old jerry and touched his forelock bring me some liquor and be quick about it i haven't any liquor what's that i said i haven't any liquor ain't there any more liquor ashore if there is i don't know where it is then find out and be quick about it or i'll give you the rope's end roared the unreasonable mate the loud talking aroused dick and he soon came out what's the matter here he asked oh so you have woke up he went on to jack lesher yes i'm awake rover and i want to know where the liquor has been placed it's been placed where you won't get hold of it mr lesher what this to me yelled the mate in fury to me the first mate a first mate doesn't count for anything here this is a private camp and if you don't behave yourself we'll pitch you out of it you you jack lesher could not go on and shook his fist in dick's face i told you what they intended to do whispered dan baxter in lesher's ear they have the upper hand and mean to keep it but don't forget that we have nine sailors in our camp to back us up he went on suggestively don't grow abusive mr lesher said dick as calmly as he could just think the matter over it may save a good deal of trouble i don't have to think it over bellowed the mate during captain blossom's absence i am in command just as much as if i were on the deck of the wreck over there you were only passengers but jerry tolman was a sailor and he's under my command i told him to bring me some liquor and he has got to do it if you won't obey it's mutiny just you remember that and he shook his finger warningly in old jerry's face i told you i don't know where the liquor is answered old jerry doggedly and he tells the truth said dick i put it away myself then i command you to bring it to me i told you before your commands don't hold water here even old jerry hasn't got to obey you when the golden wave was abandoned that ended your authority we have simply made captain blossom our leader because he acted fair and square but we don't have to obey him if we don't want to what are the nine sailors who are with me we'll be pleased to give them their full share of what is on the wreck and if they behave themselves they can build a camp right next to this one but you must remember that we discovered the wreck first and that captain blossom was the only man left on board we'll see what the men have to say about this growled lusher then you ain't going to give me no liquor you can have one glass with your breakfast and that is all after this you can have the regulation ship's grog with the other sailors but getting drunk has got to be stopped even if we have to dump all the liquor into the ocean by this time the girls had appeared on the scene and the talk came to an end dick turning in to help get breakfast jack lesher walked down to the beach followed by dan baxter you see it is just as i told you said baxter they are going to ride right over us they wouldn't ride over us if i had those other sailors here growled the mate or if we were armed went on the bully i try to get hold of a pistol but dick rover watches me like a cat watches a mouse if we could get to the wreck we might arm ourselves said lesher here is a boat let us row over i'm willing answered the bully they walked to the boat shoved it into the water and leapt in just as lesher picked up the oars dick saw what they were doing stop he cried what do you want growled the mate where are you going over to the wreck what for that is our business put in dan baxter you shan't go over there until captain blossom comes back we'll go when we please said lesher and started to row away come back i say cried dick and rushing into the house he appeared with a shotgun what are you going to do dick rover questioned baxter in alarm i am going to make you come back was the oldest rover's very quiet but determined answer End of chapter twenty chapter twenty one of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter twenty one the attack on the wreck 
the appearance of dick with the shotgun disturbed jack lesher quite as much as it did dan baxter and the mate stopped rowing instantly hi don't you fire at us he cried then come back here said dick haven't i a right to visit the wreck i am not sure that you have anyway you must wait until captain blossom returns it seems to me that you are carrying matters with a high hand young fellow oh dick be careful whispered dora they may become desperate don't worry dora he whispered in return unless i miss my guess one is as big a coward as the other i hope you ain't going too far dick said old jerry in a low tone don't you intend to stand by me jerry to be sure i do but the mate is the mate you know there was an uncertain pause all around there is no harm in my visiting the wreck growled jack lesher presently perhaps not but you had better wait until captain blossom gets back i only want to get some things that belong to me and i want to get my extra clothes said baxter these are in rags as you can see then wait until after breakfast and we'll all go over said dick but he had scarcely spoken when he felt sorry for the words oh dick don't trust yourself with them cautioned dora we want to hurry for i want to go back to where i left the sailors before night answered lesher then we'll have breakfast at once rather reluctantly the mate turned back to the shore and he and baxter left the boat then the girls prepared breakfast with all haste lesher ate but little but eagerly tossed off the glass of liquor dick allowed him give me one more he pleaded but dick was firm and the mate stalked away muttering under his breath before dick entered the rowboat he called jerry aside and handed the old sailor a pistol we had better go armed he said keep your eyes open for they may try to play us a foul trick and don't let lesher talk you into obeying him he has no authority whatever over you all right dick i'll stand by it always from this minute on said jerry and the compact was sealed by a handshake the girls came down to see them off and dora warned dick again to be on guard it was decided that lesher and old jerry should do the rowing baxter sat in the bow of the boat and dick in the stern the trip to the wreck was accomplished in almost utter silence everybody was busy with his thoughts as they drew near dick showed the mate where a ladder hung from the side and as they drew close to this baxter was the first to mount to the deck as dick had surmised lesher's first hunt was for liquor and he drank several glasses at a gulp then he began to roam around the wreck noting the damage that had been done and the amount of stores still on board my floater if the tide got extra high he said eleven men in our crowd and five in your own ought to be able to do something surely the captain says the ship is too deep in the sand answered dick briefly blossom don't know everything growled the mate both he and baxter soon found some comfortable clothing and put it on then they made up a bundle of things they said the other sailors needed when arming themselves the rovers and captain blossom had placed all of the remaining firearms in the stateroom and locked the door what did you do with all of the guns and pistols asked lesher presently after looking in vain for them they are packed away in a stateroom captain blossom thought it wouldn't do to leave them lying loose some savages might come to the islands and steal them and then we'd be in a bad hole we've got to have some guns and pistols rover well you can see the captain about that i shan't wait which stateroom are they in dick would not tell the mate and lesher went around trying the various doors coming to one that was locked he burst it open with his shoulder dick scarcely knew what to do and while he was trying to make up his mind jack lesher secured a pistol and a rifle and also a pistol for dan baxter he would have taken more firearms but dick stopped him that is enough he said i want some for the men said the first mate they can get pistols from captain blossom when they get here huh you think you are in sole command don't you i am not going to allow you to take away all the firearms that are here mr lesher we'll see the mate went into the pantry and secured another glass of liquor then he ordered old jerry to take the bundle of clothing and put it in the rowboat i've got some money on this schooner he said i want to see if that's safe 
or if you have stolen it we haven't touched any money answered dick his face flushing it would be of no use to us on these islands you come with me while i take a look said lesher behind his back he waved his hand for baxter to follow all three went below again and into a stateroom the mate had occupied the money was in that chest said the mate he threw open the lid it's gone he cried interested for the moment dick bent forward to look in the chest as he did so lesher suddenly hit him a savage blow over the head with the butt of a pistol the blow was a heavy one and dick fell like a log to the floor oh came from baxter have you killed him no only knocked the senses out of him answered lesher bending over his victim what did you do it for to teach him a lesson he shan't boss me baxter come help me put him in the brig and be quick before jerry comes back they lifted up the insensible form and made their way to where the ship's brig was located a dirty closet once used for oil and lanterns dick was thrown on the floor and the mate shut the door on him and locked it now he can stay there for a day or two he snarled reckon it will teach him a lesson what will you do with a sailor before lesher could answer old jerry appeared where is dick rover he asked none of your business growled jack lesher see here tallman are you going to obey me after this i want to know where dick is said old jerry stubbornly i put him in the brig to cool off he's too hot-headed for his own good you had no right to lock him up mr lesher you must let him out at once get out of here quick roared lesher on deck or i'll flog you well you won't touch me cried jerry his temper rising i ain't under orders no more mind that now you let him out or i'll do it you was a fool to lock him up in the first place he moved toward the brig but lesher caught him by the arm let's teach this chap a lesson too came from baxter and like a flash he struck old jerry in the back of the head the first blow was followed by a second and down went the tar the blood oozing from one of his wounds don't hit him again cried lesher hastily he's out already baxter grew pale thinking he had gone too far but he soon discovered that jerry still breathed and then he felt relieved it was decided by the pair that they should place old jerry beside dick in the brig and this was quickly done then they put into the prison a bucket of drinking water and a can of ship's biscuits and another of baked beans they won't starve on that said lesher and when they get out they'll understand that i am as much of a master here as anybody it serves dick rover right said baxter he's the kind that ought to be kept underfoot all the time End of chapter twenty one chapter twenty two of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt Perard chapter twenty two a heavy tropical storm those girls will ask some awkward questions i reckon said jack lesher as the two prepared to leave the wreck we had better not say too much answered baxter they were soon over the side and in the rowboat which contained the bundle of clothing and a number of other articles then an idea struck the mate wait i am going back he said and disappeared on the deck once more dan baxter imagined that lesher had gone for more liquor but he was mistaken when the mate reappeared he carried a box containing half a dozen pistols two guns and a quantity of ammunition i am going to hide this in the woods on the other side of this island he said the firearms may come in handy before long a good idea replied baxter and helped him place the case in a desirable spot under some rocks where the rain could not touch it we are going to have a storm before long said the mate as they started to row back to the camp and if it is a heavy one we'll have to wait till it clears off before we rejoin the rest of our crowd the sky was growing dark and by the time the beach in front of the house was gained the rain was falling 
where are dick and old jerry asked dora in quick alarm she had noted long before that only baxter and the mate were in the rowboat they stayed behind on the wreck answered lesher come help me get the bundles out of the wet he added to his companion why did they stay asked nellie don't ask me growled lesher he and baxter took the bundle to the house and dumped it on the floor of the living room then they brought in the other things from the boat by this time it was raining in torrents and from a distance came the rumble of thunder and occasionally the faint flash of lightning not wishing to remain out in the storm the three girls came into the house dora was very much disturbed and nelly and grace were also anxious it is queer that dick and old jerry remained behind whispered dora to her cousins they were so anxious to protect us before i cannot understand it dora returned nelly there has been foul play somewhere came from grace oh do you think dora could not finish see her burst in the voice of jack lesher we want some dinner don't be all day getting it for us the liquor he had imbibed was beginning to tell upon him he looked ugly and the girls trembled before him dinner will be ready in a quarter of an hour said grace who had been doing the cooking all right lesher turned to the bully baxter join me in a glass of rum for luck thanks i will answered dan baxter who did not particularly want the liquor but did not dream of offending the mate lesher produced a bottle he had brought away from the wreck prepared two glasses of rum and drank with great relish then he threw himself into a chair at the rude dining-table i am the master here and i want everybody to know it he exclaimed banging his fist savagely there is your dinner said grace and brought it in you can help yourself and she went into the next room to join nelly and dora ain't gonna wait on us eh grumbled lesher with a hiccough all right my fine ladies but i am master don't you forget that he began to eat leisurely while dan baxter began to bolt his food in the meantime the sky grew darker and the flashes of lightning more vivid the girls were greatly frightened and huddled together while tears stood on grace's cheeks oh if only somebody was with us sighed nelly by the time lesher and baxter had finished eating the storm was on them in all of its violence the wind shrieked and tore through the jungle behind them and often they could hear some tall tree go down with a crash this will tear our flag of distress to shreds said nelly and just when we need it so much too i am thinking of the future as well as the present said dora what a rough time there will be if lesher brings those other sailors here some of them were heavy drinkers like himself and only two or three were americans the storm had whipped the waters of the bay into a fury and the rain was so thick that to see even the island on which the wreck rested was impossible dick can't come now said dora a boat on the bay would surely go down having finished the meal lesher and baxter sat down in the living room to smoke and to talk over the situation the mate continued to drink and half an hour later he fell asleep sitting on the bench and with his head on the table the beast said dora as she peeped out at him well there is one satisfaction she continued he cannot harm us while he is asleep you girls better have your own dinner called out baxter i ain't going to eat you up we will get our dinner when we please said nelly as she came out we are not afraid of you dan baxter no more was said for a long time the girls ate what little they wished and washed up the dishes the rain still continued to fall in torrents but the thunder and lightning drifted away to the eastward dora was the most anxious of the trio and at every opportunity she tried to look through the driving rain toward the wreck i'd give almost anything to know if dick is safe she murmured don't be discouraged dora said grace perhaps he will return as soon as the storm is over 
the girls were huddled close to a window looking out into the rain when dan baxter threw aside the pipe he had been smoking and approached them see here girls he said why can't we be friends what is the use of being enemies in such a place as this dan baxter we want you to keep your distance said nellie coldly and if you do not it will be the worse for you when the others come back put in grace humph <laughs> i reckon you think it is fine to ride such a high horse sneered the bully what are you going to do when we bring the rest of the sailors over here we'll be eleven to seven then never mind what we'll do said dora i would rather have the company of some of those sailors than your company that is where you make a mistake the sailors are all rough fellows some of them worse than jack lesher now if you are willing to count me as a friend i'll stand by you when the crowd comes over we don't want your friendship dan baxter so there cried nellie we know your past and we know that you cannot be trusted don't think i am as good as the rovers eh we all know that you are not answered grace what have you done to dick rover questioned dora he ought to be here long before this oh i guess the storm is holding him back said baxter shifting uneasily as she gazed earnestly into his eyes if anything has happened to dick i shall hold you responsible said dora at that moment the fury of the storm cut off further talking a sudden rush of wind had come up whistling through the jungle and bringing down a palm close to the house with a crash the fall of the tree made baxter jump in alarm the house is coming down he cried and ran outside the wind made the waves in the bay rise higher and higher until they lashed furiously in all directions then came another downpour of rain which caused the bully to seek shelter again hark said nellie suddenly and raised her hand for silence what did you hear asked grace somebody calling listen all were silent once more and just then the wind fell a little i don't hear anything said dora but then followed a distant voice two voices calling desperately help help our boat is sinking help End of chapter twenty two chapter twenty three of the rover boys on land and sea by arthur m winfield this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter twenty three what happened on the bay to go back to tom sam and captain blossom at the time that they placed the two dead goats in their rowboat and prepared to return to the camp it was already raining by the time the shore of the bay was reached and scarcely had they begun to row when the water came pouring down in torrents gracious i must say i don't like this cried tom the rain is running down my neck in a stream i move we row into shore over yonder said sam pointing up the coast there are some trees which will shelter both us and the boat nicely captain blossom was willing and in a few minutes they were under the trees and wringing out their clothes as best they could if i know anything about it this storm is going to last for some time said the captain after a long look at the sky such a downfall as this can't last said sam perhaps we can get home between showers it was dry under the trees for about half an hour but then the water began to reach them once more and they had to shift their position again this kept up for some time until all were wet through and thoroughly uncomfortable when tom proposed that they start for home regardless of the storm we can't get any wetter than we are he declared and the sooner we reach the house the sooner we'll be able to change our clothes the others agreed and when the worst of the lightning and thunder had passed they set off once more two rowing and the third steering the boat and bailing out the water which came in faster than was desirable when it rains in the tropics it rains observed tom put me in mind of that storm we met when we were in africa do you remember sam 
indeed i do answered his brother i thought we'd all be killed by the trees that fell in the jungle have you been in africa came from captain blossom in astonishment yes answered tom our father got lost there once and we went in search of him and he gave a few of the particulars as already related in another volume of this series entitled the rover boys in the jungle well you boys have had some ups and downs said the captain but i reckon you weren't cast away before like this not like this answered sam but we were left on a lonely island once in lake huron and he related a few particulars of their exciting experiences with the baxters while on the great lakes another downpour of rain cut off the talking and tom was kept busy bailing out the rowboat with three persons and the two dead goats the craft was pretty heavily loaded and more than once the rising wind swept more water over the bow i'd give a little to be ashore again said tom presently it seems to me that the rain is shutting out everything we'll have to land again lads put in the captain with a grave shake of his head the wind is growing worse we don't want to be swamped they turned to what they thought must be the direction of the nearest shore but though they pulled with might and main for nearly quarter of an hour no land appeared we're mixed cried sam the storm has twisted us up by this time the wind was blowing a regular gale on the bay it took off tom's cap and in a twinkle the headgear was out of sight my cap's gone groaned the youth the water is coming in over the bow came from sam we will be swamped we must throw the goats overboard said the captain and overboard went the game much to the boy's sorrow this lightened the craft a little but still the waves swept over the gunwale and now both sam and tom set to bailing while their captain took both oars then came another blast of wind worse than before i see land cried sam we are going over yelled tom and the wind fairly whipped the words from his lips then came a mighty wave and on the instant the rowboat was upset and all three found themselves in the waters of the bay as they went under the same thought was in the mind of each were there any sharks around help help cried sam as soon as he came up our boat is sinking help and tom soon joined in the cry they had caught hold of the overturned boat but the craft for some reason failed to support them captain blossom was close at hand and he advised them to strike out for the shore it's in this direction he said and led the way i i can't swim very far with my clothes on gasped sam yet he struck out as best he could hello who calls came a cry from the shore and looking up they saw dora standing there with nelly and grace laying close beside her it's tom and sam cried nelly and captain blossom added grace perhaps we can throw them a rope came from dora and she ran to get the article she had mentioned but by the time she returned the three swimmers had reached a point where they could touch bottom with their feet and watching for a favorable opportunity they rushed ashore almost into the arms of the girls oh tom how glad i am that you are safe cried nelly while grace caught hold of sam and asked if he was all right yes i am am all right but but pretty well fact out gasped sam it was a close shave said captain blossom and our guns are gone we had two dead goats too put in tom they went overboard first and goodness gracious is that really dan baxter dan baxter ejaculated sam and even captain blossom stared in amazement i see you've had a rough time of it said baxter coming forward coolly how are you he shook hands with captain blossom while the rover boys continued to stare at him are you alone asked the master of the golden wave no jack lusher is with me and we left nine of the sailors on another island is that so where is lusher now in the house asleep he is intoxicated said nelly 
he has been drinking ever since he put in an appearance hmm. that's like lecture muttered the captain and his brow darkened all moved toward the house and entered to get out of the wet the mate was still at the table snoring loudly might as well let him sleep it off said the captain but when he is sober i'll have a talk with him wet clothing was changed for dry and then the captain and the boys listened to what baxter and the girls had to tell the captain was glad to learn that so many of his men had been saved and asked for the names i don't care much about peterson and mcglow he said they are tough customers i would rather have heard from peabody dixon and farewell you don't know anything about them no said dan baxter this news about dick and old jerry worries me said tom dan baxter i think you know more than you care to tell said sam boldly the bully hardly knew how to reply he could not now fall back on jack lesher for support and he had thought to be on his way to rejoin the sailors ere this the storm had upset all of his calculations it had been a foolish movement to attack dick and old jerry and it now looked as if he must suffer for it well and i don't mind telling you that dick and the mate had something of a quarrel he said hesitatingly how did it end asked tom i can't say exactly why not you were with lesher at the time no i wasn't he ordered me to get into the rowboat and wait for him while he went back to get a pistol or a gun i heard loud talking on the deck of the schooner and i know a row was on i was just going back to the deck when the mate came and leapt into the rowboat he said the sailor and dick were going to remain behind and that we wouldn't wait any longer then we rowed over here if that's the case i'll make lesher tell us what happened cried tom and shook the mate roughly wake up here he cried wake up and give an account of yourself End of chapter twenty three